Okay, well, welcome um, in this video, and I apologize, I'm going to try to do this a cappella, and I hope uh, that you guys don't get annoyed by my voice. In this video, we'll try to accomplish two tasks. Number one is an intercorporeal knot. Um, I am going to explain to you um, the technique of Dr. Romeo. Dr. Romeo is a doctor from um, South America who works uh, with uh, Carl Storrs, and he developed his own intercorporeal suturing technique, and it is called the gladiator technique. And so basically, the first thing that we are going to utilize is, of course, a needle driver. And uh, this is for the right hand, uh, or the dominant hand, and I want you to realize something about this needle driver. We actually have this needle driver in our OR. But uh, if the camera allows, right here, you can see that there's a difference in the color of the titanium. And all the way up to here, you can see the beginning of the handle. So that is going to be two different places where you are going to be able to decide how long should you trim your suture for intercorporeal. As a tip, uh, I would say that uh, you should not um, trim it shorter rather than longer, but at the same rate, don't cut it too, too long. Especially for vaginal cuff, you might want to have it a tiny bit longer than the actual mark on the needle holder that I was showing you. So for this particular demonstration, I'm going to cut it exactly at the mark because um, I need to look good. So um, I am loading my needle with the tip pointing towards the patient's head um, or pointing towards cephalic. And I am going to go ahead and trim it outside. I'm sorry that I cannot show you because I am a one-man camera. And I am going to, in this point, uh, at this point, introduce and use two actual needle drivers. The modification that I was uh, talking about with the other instrument is using a Maryland um, grasper on the left hand. I'm going to go ahead and introduce with my left hand all the way. And with my right hand, I'm going to strain the suture. Now here, a few things. Um, you want to grab the needle about one centimeter away from the heel, and you want to try to avoid grabbing the distal third of the needle. So right here, um, I'm going to grab it from three-fourths of the way. And uh, with my left hand, I'm just going to do a little bit of an adjustment to overcome that 2D, 3D um, challenge in our vision with laparoscopy. And uh, I am going to do something that I was uh, actually taught recently in a course by Dr. O'Hanlon, who basically engraved this in my brain, uh, which is grab the needle with the molars of the needle holder. So now that I have it, um, I'm going to go in and I'm, uh, to give me a little bit of a haptic feedback reference, I'm going to touch slightly the tissue that I'm going to suture, and I'm going to go in parallel. I'm going to go ahead and retrieve. As soon as I take it out, I am going to grab it again, more or less one centimeter away from the needle heel. And now here's what comes uh, as the gladiator technique. This pointing up is save the gladiator. So this will help you or assist you. I'm sorry about the focus of the camera. Um, this will help you make your right side uh, knot. Killing the gladiator will help you make your left left ha left side um, knot. So in order to do our gladiator technique, you have to leave. Oh, one more thing. You have what is called the home box, and while you do your knots, you have to travel, travel, travel. So right now. Two, two different ways to see it, um, actually three, a C or a V, there's a V, and you can also see it as a 
kind of like a dyslexic D. So what I am going to do, um, keep in mind that your left hand is going to be dynamic. I have my left uh, needle driver locked. And I am actually holding it only with my fingertips. So I can like easily rotate. So I am going to go in and I am saving the gladiator. And I'm going to go for a second loop. Close. Going, traveling with the home box. Going for my suture tip. Securing it like with the ratchet. And then I am going to pull. And you have to make a straight knot. So now that I have my straight knot, I'm going to let that go. And I am going to make another C. And I'm going to kill the gladiator. Straighten my, my suture, travel with the home box, ratchet my suture, and pull. Now if you encounter this problem of a uh, little bit of a uh, air knot, if my Samsung phone cooperates, there we go, you pull on the left side of the suture which is going to help you cinch the stitch or not I think I've done this with Mo Mohammed several times um, and it's worth it worked every time but it's giving me a hard time right now there we go now I'm bringing again, making our, our C. Traveling with the home box to make our C bigger, saving the gladiator, going for a tip. And I apologize, I don't know what's going on with this phone. Maybe I need a new one. Donations are accepted. Sorry. And that was number three. And this would be killing the gladiator. And this would be number four. And you are done with your stitch. So that was uh, intercorporeal suture with a gladiator technique. Thanks to Dr. Romeo, who I probably owe like 20 bottles of red wine. Because when I took the course, he was challenging me, challenging me to do 20 knots of this type in two minutes. And I was like, there is no way. Thank you.